Commercial software product development is very much different from what people think of as application development. Typical application development involves creating an application or set of programs to perform a finite series of tasks where the user may be guided through one of several paths in order to complete specific tasks. Many times these tasks are related to the internal processes of an organization. Commercial software product development consists of building a software product with a broad range of functionality that can be sold commercially to external companies or individuals in either vertical or horizontal markets. In his iconic book, The Mythical Man Month, Essays on Software Engineering, Frederick Brooks estimates that if it takes one month to build an application for execution by the author on a system where it was developed, then it will take three months to deliver the same application to run on other operating environments with different sets of data. The extra effort is required to generalize the program, make it maintainable by anyone, document it, and test it thoroughly. Alternatively, he estimates it takes three months to deliver the same application on the author's system as a component that interfaces with other system components. In this case, the program must have precisely defined interfaces, run efficiently in the environment, and pass an exhaustive series of tests with various system components in all expected combinations. Overall, he estimates that it takes nine man months to deliver that application as a software product to run on multiple machines, operating systems, and against a variety of data with an acceptable level of performance and reliability. So, as we can see from Brooks' experience, it takes vastly more time to develop the broader functionality and robustness required of a commercially available software product as compared to a specific application. Software products created for a vertical market are built to address the specific needs of a particular industry. A multitude of software products exist today targeted at the financial, transportation, insurance, and communications markets, just to name a few. Software products developed for the horizontal market is software that can be used by companies in a wide variety of industries. Typically, this software has a broader range of functionality than software developed for a vertical market, and therefore is applicable to most organizations. An example of a product aimed for the horizontal market is a reporting product that can be used to generate reports from a wide variety of data that exists within an organization. The overall software development process may involve people from various departments, including marketing, software development, technical publications, quality assurance, and company management. The software product being developed may be a brand new product, maintenance, or additional functionality to an existing product, or a redesign of current components. Regardless of the type of software being developed, it must be robust and comprehensive enough so that it can be deployed successfully in many organizations. The commercial software product development process evolves from various product ideas generated by a number of sources, both external and internal. Ideas for software products can come from existing customers, but in most cases from numerous other sources. Quite often, a market research study aimed at new customer demographic will be the genesis for a new software product or product enhancement. Other product ideas may come from competitors, internal employees, lost customers, or those who refused to buy previously, as well as from the marketplace in general. The marketing department is usually the first to evaluate software product ideas to determine if they are in line with the company's marketing strategies and objectives. New product ideas are also evaluated for compatibility with existing sales and distribution channels, for coexistence with or additive benefit to existing products, or whether they open up new channels of distribution, for example, resellers or OEMs. A critical step in the evaluation process 
is to determine the product's estimated cost and time to market in order to determine its overall economic feasibility. A detailed business case is often required before the software product idea is approved by company management, allowing the project to move forward. Complementary software products help to add value to existing products and provide opportunity for additional sales to current customers. Add-on products or features increase customer satisfaction with the existing product while showing innovation and market leadership by investing in new technologies. This approach helps to maintain the customer base and offers opportunities for future growth. Diversifying in a new product area opens up new opportunities and markets for attracting a new demographic of potential customers and thereby, if executed properly, increases the overall customer base. Offering a broader range of products usually decreases the risks from adverse market conditions or from competitors while increasing the overall stability of the company. There are a number of software development process models that are described in detail in the video module called the software process. For the purposes of this module, we will be using prescriptive models in the software development process. One model that is often used is the waterfall model, which is linear in approach and is ideal when all the requirements are well understood and fixed. Another prescriptive model is the incremental model, where the software can be delivered in a set of controllable increments. This approach allows change to be easily controlled within an increment because the increment timeline is relatively short. In the incremental model, the look and feel of a user interface will require a prototype approach, soliciting feedback from marketing at various development milestones so the changes can be made to accommodate the feedback. In the software development process that will follow, we will use a combination of the waterfall model and the incremental model. As an example, we will use a reporting product that runs under Windows on the client but accesses a variety of data sources across multiple platforms. The remainder of this course will cover the following topics as they relate to commercial software product development. Product requirements and design, implementation, testing, documentation and training, internationalization and accessibility, delivery and licensing, project management and next release, support, quality assurance, and summary of the course. Once the marketing department has championed the idea for the software product and the business case has been accepted by management, it is now time for the software product requirements to be created. 